If you're a woman on the internet, you probably just learned what buckle fat is for the first time. Black talk, big t-shirt, Billy. Eilish. My ladies to show off their jawline. Oh, I just woke up, so I thought I'd give uh, an update. Great. Buckle fat removal surgery is the latest beauty trend being shoved down women's throats. It's when a surgeon removes someone's buckle fat pads, which is just a fancy way of saying the fat on your cheeks. Almost overnight, the popularity of this procedure has skyrocketed, especially on social media. While most women were blissfully unaware that buckle fat even existed, celebrities like Chrissy Teigen were getting the fat removed from their cheeks and proudly telling the internet all about it. The hashtag buckle fat removal has over 157 million views on TikTok, and Google Trends data shows that searches for buckle fat removal have shot up dramatically. One surgeon quoted by the New York Times said that he does three times as many buckle fat removals as he did five years ago, and now charges $40,000 for the procedure. Immediately after this trend began, women on social media described feeling insecure about the size of their cheeks. Some women even said they felt totally fine with their cheeks until seeing these videos. While this is just the latest trend encouraging women to alter their bodies, the pressure for women to conform to beauty ideals is nothing new. These procedures go in and out of style, just like fashion trends. But arguably the best example of this is the Brazilian butt lift. The popularity of this procedure coincided almost perfectly with Kim Kardashian's rise to fame. The number of BBLs performed internationally rose 77% from 2015 to 2019, at a time when Kim Kardashian's butt had become a full-fledged cultural fixation. It was the subject of countless interviews. People were so obsessed with her butt that Kim Kardashian even tried to prove that her butt was natural with an x-ray on her show. When Kim suddenly appeared looking much thinner, people immediately started speculating that the BBL era would end. This goes to show how these trends blatantly contradict each other. One day thin is in, then the next day it's BBLs, and then back to thin again. There's literally no way to win. This has a direct impact on the way women perceive themselves. 80% of teen girls said they compare themselves to celebrities, half of whom said doing so makes them feel bad about their own appearance. Another study showed that nearly half of 13-year-old American girls said they were dissatisfied with their bodies. By age 17, this number increased to 80%. One study found that 40% of 9- and 10-year-old girls have tried to lose weight. And of course this was going to happen. These standards aren't naturally achievable. But that's completely by design. There's a multi-billion dollar industry that's built on manufacturing new insecurities and then selling women the cure. The cosmetic surgery industry says, your natural features are flawed, but if you do this procedure, we can fix it for you. Don't believe me? Just check out the financial press. You can find all kinds of articles talking about how cosmetic surgery could be the next big investment opportunity. A report by researchandmarkets.com projects the global cosmetic surgery industry to go from $67 billion in 2021 to 201 billion dollars by 2031. Another article by Focus Investment Banking, a financial advisory group composed of 37 mostly male bankers, were drooling over what they called the new private equity darling we should have noticed sooner. The article explains how both investors and surgeons can profit off of the cosmetic surgery's increasing popularity. The article even laments that the surgeries are currently limited to specific areas of the body, but sees an opportunity to profit by broadening the practice's footprint. Now, why do you think a bunch of male bankers are so obsessed with cosmetic practices targeted at women? And as this article explains, the surgeons also have a financial incentive to push plastic surgery trends onto young girls. Cosmetic surgeons rely heavily on branding themselves as relatable and trustworthy. In fact, a survey of cosmetic surgeons found that the top concern for patients was whether or not they could trust their doctor. And as every successful marketer knows, there's no better place to build trust in your brand with thousands of potential new customers than social media. Are you ready for your operation, Mr. Subiot? As ready as I'll ever be. There's been a huge surge of plastic surgeon influencers who use TikTok to promote their brand. One Business Insider article following this trend quotes Dr. Kim Patrick Murray, who says that he saw a huge spike in business after starting his social media page. There's also an entire marketing industry cropping up around these plastic surgeons, who make their money by advising these surgeons on how to go viral on TikTok. One company, Sagapixel, writes in their guide that the best strategy for TikTok is to promote surgeries that appeal most to younger audiences. Studies show that a third of all users on the platform are under 19. Business Insider even ran an experiment where they created an account and set the age to 14 to see how long it would take before plastic surgery videos appeared. It took eight minutes. 
But what these videos won't tell you is that buckle fat naturally goes away over time, meaning many of those getting their buckle fat removed will look incredibly gaunt as they age. With some surgeries, the complications can be even worse. There have been several instances of patients dying after getting Brazilian butt lifts. A 2017 report found that 3% of surgeons had a patient die after a BBL. But the cosmetic surgery industry is just one of many players in the beauty industry that profits off of women's insecurities. What's the difference between saying your cheeks are too round and saying your eyebrows are too thin, or your lips are too pale, or your skin tone is uneven? I mean, isn't the concept behind contouring the same concept behind buckle fat removal? The underlying message is the same. Your natural features aren't good enough. This is the message repeated in the corporate media ad nauseum. Women are bombarded at every turn with made-up flaws and unrealistic beauty standards, and then offered a cure in the form of some product, whether it's makeup, diet regimens, or a $40,000 buckle fat reduction. If you want to understand where these unrealistic beauty standards are coming from, just follow the money. The beauty industry shells out millions of dollars just to get your favorite celebrity to hold a tube of lipstick for five seconds so that you'll be more likely to buy it. And a lot of the time, it works. Why? Think about any depiction you see of women in movies, or music videos, or magazine covers. Anywhere you look in the media, you see the same thing. A thin woman with an hourglass figure who always looks flawless. Even if she's just rolled out of bed, her hair is perfect. She has a full face of makeup on. Even when she's running or fighting, she never sweats, her legs are shaved, and she's wearing the least practical outfit you could imagine. What kind of message does this send to young women? The most important thing about you is your appearance. You won't be taken seriously unless you look like these women. This literally determines how women spend their time and money. A survey taken in 2014 showed that adult women spend 335 hours on their appearance per year. For teen girls, it's 402 hours. The study also showed 68% of adult women and 71% of teen girls put on makeup as part of their daily routine. Now, it's true that some women enjoy putting on makeup. That's not the problem here. The point is that large numbers of women are doing this because they feel obligated to. Studies show that your decision to wear makeup directly impacts your income. One study showed that women who spent more time on hair and makeup earned more on average than women who didn't. Another study showed that the choice to wear makeup influences how women are perceived in a job interview. Maybe this is why one third of women say they would never leave the house without makeup. These decisions are clearly driven by the potential that women may face negative consequences for not wearing makeup. One study says that women spend an average of a quarter of a million dollars on beauty practices in their lifetime. These industries have created a world where there is so much pressure to be beautiful that it's basically a requirement. They've conditioned us to constantly feel inadequate, to constantly doubt ourselves, and feel this constant need to run back to them to find the fix. But the truth is, they need us more than we need them. 